Welcome to All Grown Up Now, Tales of a Checkered Past. I'm Kenneth D. King, podcasting from my studio near Union Square in New York City. This podcast is an evolution of the tale, All Grown Up Now, A Friendship in Three Acts. This is season two, and it's called Tales of a Checkered Past. It's a collection of short stories from my salad days on up to the present. In each podcast, another self-contained story will be presented. These podcasts will be broadcast bi-weekly, so you get two a month. Enjoy. Episode 46 is called Pink Tarantula. It's another story about one of the neighbors that I had in the South of Market neighborhood when I was in San Francisco in the late 1990s. In the late 1990s, San Francisco was a city undergoing a seismic shift in culture. This was because of the dot-com period. Oceans of money washed over the city, pushing out all sorts of interesting people. Artists, musicians, odd ducks, many were pushed out when the dot-com businesses forced the rents up. For those of us who remained, life was losing the texture and sparkle that the city had once fostered. There was one particular day that marked the dividing line between the old time and the new time. Three events that happened that day telegraphed to me that we were in a new age. The first was the death of Herb Cain. Herb Cain, for those who never heard of him, was San Francisco's version of Walter Winchell, a man about town who wrote a column in the newspaper detailing the comings, goings, and doings of the great and the not-so-great in the city. If one got mentioned in Herb Cain's column, that meant you had arrived and you were truly a San Franciscan. And yes, indeed, I got my mention in Herb Cain's column. Thank you very much. It was for the hat that Elton John wore for the Diet Coke nightclub commercial. But sadly, Herb Cain was dead. The end of an era. The next event that day was a horrific car accident at 9th and Howard, just a block up from my studio at 8th and Howard. Some dot-com douchebag in his SUV blasted through a stoplight, crashing into oncoming cars, which then bounced into a crowd at the bus stop, killing some people. We had been seeing more of this kind of driving as the dot-com douchebags in their huge vehicles proliferated through South of Market. This was just a matter of time. But... The most important event that day centered around a woman named Carmel, proprietress of the hair salon Pink Tarantula on Langton Alley. First, a little backstory. The first time I saw Carmel was on Folsom Street. She was walking down the sidewalk one sunny day with a herd of pug dogs on leashes. I remember lots of black leather and chrome studs and knee-length black boots as Carmel was a biker chick. Carmel had thigh-length black, black, black hair that she wore loose. The hair was flying all around her in the breeze. She also was tattooed over as much of her body as I could see. Great sunglasses completed the look. As she passed by, the pug dogs trotting ahead and her black hair flying, looking fabulous. I thought to myself, wow, she's going to make a cool-looking old lady one day. She ducked into Pink Tarantula, and I figured out who she was. When I decided to bleach my hair out, Carmel did the first bleaching. It was a fun salon visit. There were murals on the walls of scary clowns, as I remember. Watching her interact with the cast of characters who came and went, I understood why people referred to her as the mayor of Langton Alley. When her hunter green and white Harley was out front, 
the mayor was in. Now, back to the day Herb Cain died. Late in the day, about 6 o'clock, I needed a coffee, so I ducked down Langton Alley to go to Brainwash, the coffee shop and laundromat on Folsom. I noticed police cars and yellow tape around the pink tarantula. What's going on, I asked one of the neighbor women who were standing around watching. She said in a hushed tone, There's been a shooting. A crowd gathered, then whispers. It was Carmel. The story came out later on the evening news. There was a full salon. People were getting their hair done. The stylists were working away, just like any other day. A man came in, asked for Carmel, saying he wanted to set an appointment. Carmel came forward and went to the desk. When she leaned down to look at her book, he pulled out a gun and... (laughs) Dead in front of everyone in the shop. Then he ran out the door, jumped into a waiting car, and they sped away. Walking by the shop a few days later, I looked in the window. I just remember seeing a bullet hole in the wall through the head of one of those scary clowns in the murals. A few days later, after her family arrived from Australia, the funeral was held in a little church in Noe Valley. While we were waiting to go in, I was talking to some of the neighbor people who also attended. Then I got the rest of the story. It seems that Carmel was divorcing a crazy and abusive man who everyone assumed had put a hit on her. When the husband showed up at the funeral, the reaction of the crowd was immediate like the reaction of the people when O.J. stood up at Mrs. Simpson's funeral. The hair on the back of my neck went on end, and I thought, he looks guilty as hell. He correctly played the grieving spouse, but he wasn't convincing. The rest of the story was told on one of those crime shows on TV. The man who did the hit and the woman who drove the getaway car were found in Mexico, extradited, and they ratted the husband out. He's in jail, where he belongs. Karma was buried, and in my mind, buried with her was the end of an era in San Francisco. It was people like her who were, and I imagine still are, having a hard time making their way in a ruinously expensive place. It was these people who made the San Francisco of my day the wonderful place that it was. Thanks for listening. You can get the audiobook All Grown Up Now on iTunes, Audible, and Amazon, or from my website, allgrownupnow.com. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you have any questions, you can reach me through the website, allgrownupnow.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Kenneth D. King on Facebook at Kenneth D. King Design or on my main website, KennethDKing.com.